Hello and welcome to another Canvas tutorial. Today we'll be going over creating a queue, creating a queue with times, fade times, and basic effects with intensities and movements. So let's get started. So we have our Sharpies, 10 of them, already patched into the programmer. Now, let's bring up our visualizer. Alright, so let's make this a little bit smaller. There we go. So let's select our Sharpies. As we can see, they're all lined up right here. Let's turn the intensity up to 100. Now, I've already done a little bit of playing around with this, so that's why they're red and white, which we'll get to that. So let's set it to white first. And let's set our position to center. Now, these positions up here are customizable, as you can delete these and create your own different positions using the tilt and pan variables. But we'll start off with center. So, to create a queue, program in what you want your lights to be doing at the time. Either you want them one color, like red, amber, yellow, or just white, your color, and then if you're wanting a gobo, if they're moving lights. So once you have all this programmed and how you want your lights to look, you go over here to record. You'll press record and select any of these cue spots, cues, excuse me, that you want it to be in on the playback. So once you've hit record, then go over here to your open playback and press, and your cue will be added into the playback section itself. So now, once you clear your programmer, once you bring up that that play playback, excuse me, it'll bring up what you programmed in the programmer. So what we had is just turning the intensity up to 100%, and this fader you can control the master intensity. Now going deeper into the settings of what the playback fader does, you can change it to be different things, but that's more an advanced. Excuse me, I can't talk today. That's more of an advanced level. This is just the basics for right now. So we have this queue. So now let's create a second queue. Going back to layout one, select your your uh, movers that you have. We'll turn that down, and we'll turn our intensity up. Now let's move the lights out forward a little bit towards us. So let's go about right there. Now also, let's say we want the, the lights to fan out equally on each side. So to do this, we have the lights how they're placed right now. If we bring our mouse over and go to fan and select that, it'll fan out the lights. And it'll sh by when you go over to either your tilt or your pan, it'll then fan them out in the way of whichever one you're wanting to use. So we're going to pan. So right now we can either go that way and we can cross the beams or we can fan out to the sides. So I'm going to leave it fanning out towards the sides a little bit, about right there. Now, another thing you can do, so after you, after you fan, make sure you press all to select all of the lights. And this way, when you use, let's say, oh, I didn't do it right. Let's go back here. Oh. Pardon me. If you press the fan button again, then it'll, it'll turn that fan function off. So now you, they'll all go by them together as one. My, my mistake. So now let's say, let's have all the lights red. Now earlier in, the, in the, the video, we saw that there were four white lights and the rest were red. Now you could individually go to single out the head or press next head, and it'll show you over here which head you're on every time you press next head. Or you can press all, and then using this odd even button over here, you can press that and it'll select the odds or evens, whichever you select. And then you press a color and it'll turn every other one that color. So I want blue or cyan or amber or white. Now how I had it was where, so let's select all red again. Let's do all of them red. Make sure they're all red. Press and hold brings up a little selection. Now I had it on threes. That means that when I select the white, it will look exactly like that. I kind of like that look. So after we've done that, we'll select all. Make sure all the lights are selected. All ten. 
So let's say we want that to be our next hue. So we have the positions programmed in, the color, and we have all of our lights selected and how we want the, the beams to be. So now you press, just like before, press record and go to select the playback. Now it shows that it's playback, or Q1 and Q2. So we'll clear out our programmer, double click the S button, or on here you can just double click this box, and it'll show Q1 and Q2. Now right now it's in a chase sequence. So that means when you bring this up, it'll go down, back up, and change the color, I believe. Let's see. All right. All right, so my next point is to change this from a chase to a queue where you can manually tell it when to go. So turn this down. Now over here where it says chase timing and queue timing, you can select queue timing, press yes, and it'll change all this to queues. And that means when you take this up, then you can press the go button and it'll go to the next one. Yep, there are the colors now. So let's say that you only want one of these to be a queue timing and arrest the rest of them to be chase times. So you can go here and decide whether chase or queue and it'll do exactly as you want. So we're just gonna leave it all queue timing for this presentation. So you can see they go directly and immediately back down into the next one. Now what you can do is you can add a fade. So let's say we want a fade time of three seconds on this one and this one. So do that, and that will mean it'll slowly fade to the next queue that you have. Now on the visualizer, it shows that it's switching directly to the red without fading. While the visualizer isn't perfect, uh, in person your lights will fade three seconds and the color will fade. Yeah, so um, continuing on, let's, let's say we want to change the the white ones, let's say we want to change them to a different color to create the next queue. So to go off of this queue right here, instead of trying to recreate this whole thing throughout the programmer to match, to match queue number two, we can go over here to incorporate. You're going to incorporate queue number two and select, and that'll bring it into the programmer. I believe, yes, included queue from queue stack into the programmer. And you see your, your clear button will be lit, and now you can go back to layout one. So what you can do is we can select the odds, we'll do the threes, and close. Let's say we wanted them to be yellow, so we can change those to yellow. And what we can do is we can either press update, and by pressing update, if you go back here, it'll update this queue. So instead of those being white in the queue, they'll now be yellow. So you'll go from Q1 to Q2, and Q2 will look like this. Now to do your next Q, if you want it to be from here going to the next one, then you can start out exactly the same way and we want those to be yellow. Now let's say we want let's say we want the the lights to be up a little bit more and we need to make sure to go all let's say we want them to be up here. So let's say we want it to move there. Now what we'll do, instead of pressing update, we'll press record, and we'll press on the queue stack. Now we see there's a third queue right there, and that's our, our newest one that we just made. So we'll clear out the programmer, and let's start at the top. So we can either, two ways, we can go down like that, and bring it back up, and you'll be at the top, or you can press on that queue and press go to queue and it'll take you to that queue. So let's see how this looks. Going to that one and it fades to the red. And going to the third one, the lights move up and the colors turn yellow. I'm not exactly sure, it, I can't remember if the Sharpies have a color wheel in them or if they actually can fade very smoothly. I think that may be why we're having the issue of them not fading smoothly, because it, it, it looked like it had a color wheel. So I'm guessing they have a color wheel, I can't exactly remember, it's been a while. Um, okay, so now that we have that, we've got a good set of cues. So what we can do also is 
if we want to use the next queue, if we want it to be queue number two, we want it to be that with the position down and the colors like that. What we can do is we can, in two ways we can do this. We can copy, you select that, and you can paste it down there so it's the same one. Or you can incorporate that queue number two and record it as a new queue. Now, whatever you do with this queue, number two up here, if you change the colors to red and blue, it'll change queue number four to red and blue. It, it's copying what you have from the original queue, which our original is queue number two. So, if we press next, then we have our lights going up and then changing to yellow. And then, just like the other one, they'll go back down in queue number four. So, now moving on to creating an effect. Let's say, let's keep it right here. We want this to be our position for the effect. So, let's incorporate this queue. Let's go back to layout one, select our heads. All the positions is set already because we incorporated everything from that queue into the programmer. So our positions and our colors are all set and ready to go. So we want to create a position effect. So what we'll do is we'll select the lights, 1 through 10. We'll go over here to Add Effects. We'll go to Position. And let's say we want to do a, a pan. So let's select that. Now the lights will start panning. Now you're able to customize this in different ways that you like. So you can create a smaller size, which they 1% is literally nothing almost. And you can go from there and making it bigger. So let's see. We don't want the lights going too far out to the side. So let's keep it about right there. Let's see. What about our spread? We kind of want, we don't want them to be everywhere. We want a little bit of, let's make it a little tight. Let's speed it up a little bit. We'll change a little bit. All right, let's say that looks good. That's how you want your, your effect to be. So we got those colors, those positions. Now let's go and create the queue. So we'll record and record it into the, the playback. So now we have number four going into number five with the three second fade, as you see right here. And we'll go into that. Let's say, so we have the pan eff effects in it. So let's incorporate that one. Now going back to progr program, right, going to layout one actually, select your lights first, then go to program. Go to program and press add effects and then position. Let's say we want to add a tilt to this. So then select tilt. You can add your pan and your tilt now. So let's say the tilt, let's see what it looks like. We can reorder the effect to where it can go the center out. Let's see how that looks. I'm not liking that too much, so let's let's reorder it. Let's just do normal again. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it looks all right. Let's 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 just stick to that. Let's do that. So let's actually let's make it a little bit let's do that let's just leave it like that so then now we have a pan effect and a tilt effect all in one creating this pretty neat looking looking effect for our lights so again we'll just hit record Put it in there, clear out our programmer, and with a three second fade, our next effect will start that we've created. Now, 
So let's let's go back to Q4. Let's see what I think Q4 is our one that is not moving. Yeah, let's right there. So let's let's uh let's incorporate this Q into the programmer. Now let's go out and create an intensity effect. So same thing, go to the effects. Now instead of position, we'll go over to intensity. You have different options. What we're going to do for this one is a dim chase. So after you press that, you notice the lights aren't doing anything. Well, one reason could be because this is up, or if you go to layout one, your intensity is a, is at 100%. Well, your intensity effect cannot can't do anything if your intensity is all the way up because intensity is dimming or flickering and bringing the lights back up. At 100%, the effect just doesn't work. So let's bring it to zero. Now, like I said, the visualizer doesn't always have the best uh, fading to show. So as we go back to program, we can, the spread, we can change the spread. We can change the X fade, the cross fade. And that means it's, it's just more, it's stiffer, just like that. So you can speed it up. It could, it, you, sometimes it looks pretty cool if you can do, you can do some pretty neat things with the crossfade at zero. Let's see, let's continue, let's go a little faster. Yeah, let's see something like that, you know. Ooh, you can do something like that and, you know, I think, uh, make that even. The effects with... You can make it smaller, so it's, if you make it smaller, it singles out the lights a little bit more. If you make it bigger, you know, you can do some cool things, you know, just mess around, have fun with it. But we like that. But we're going to put the fade all the way up again. Cross fade. We're going to bring the speed back down. Now, like before, we can select the effect, reorder it, go from the center out, and since we have five lights on the other side, because we have ten, we can do segments, so we can now go from the center out. And I'll bring this down a little bit. It looks a little, you can see it better if I bring it down. See, so you have the two, it's going just doing twos, going all the way out. So let's say we want that to be our next cue. So record, put it there, clear out our programmer, now we have a little bit we have a small cue list, all with the fade of three seconds each. So we start there, go to Q2, bring the lights up and out, and our fading of three seconds changes to red. Q3, the lights change to red and yellow. Q4, the lights go back down. Q5, we start our pan effect. And then once you get to Q6, then your pan and tilt effects come into play. Then Q7 is the one we just did and is our intensity. And we bring the light back down and intensity starts. So that's pretty much the basics of how to create a cue or a chase and how you can add fade time to them. You also can add a delay time to each one if you so like. Just kind of mess around with it. You can figure it out the more you play the easier things get and you start to understand and learn for yourself. And that's kind of the basics of how everything works and how you can create basic effects all on your own in a, in a reasonable amount of time. And you slowly start to get faster at programming effects and creating effects as experience. So I hope this really helps you. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and thank you for watching.